All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Business Success Book Circle. Uh, we are in week three of Get Over Your Damn Self by Rami Neustadt. And uh, this week we're covering chapters nine through 12. And, um, you know, we were doing these Saturdays and Tuesdays. So on Saturday, I was showing, you know, these, these chapters were kind of, these ones are really good for me. This, this is kind of a kick in the ass chapters, I feel like, at least for myself, um, of really like being in action and, and uh, you know, what needs to, to happen and, you know, what's the bullshit stories I'm telling myself and what's the activity that I'm doing or not doing. And um, so this has been, this has been really good for me. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a couple things. Chapter nine, fortunes in the follow-up. Yeah, this is something that, ob it's obvious, it's obvious, and I realize as much as I'm a system person in so many ways, you know, I don't do a very great job of tracking all my connects and going back and following up. So um, this has inspired me to kind of go back and get into uh, a little bit of a better rhythm. I, uh, I do use, have been using the, the master prospect list that's part of the high achievers playbook. Um, but I'm actually a pretty digital, like I like to write stuff down and I, I do keep a lot of tracking who I'm talking to and when my next appointments are in my, in my playbook. Um, but I'm also a digital person, like to have those moments where I'm like, okay, who have I talked to in the past and who do I need to follow up with? Especially right now when we have a major reach back reason with a new product, right? It's like, I'm having to like rack my brain here a little bit. So I uh, went back to kind of my basics and I have a Excel spreadsheet that I started and I'm really documenting everybody that I'm talking in, in there right now so that I have that master list that feels a little bit more robust. Um, and also I'm a digital person like that where like, I love it's on a Google, if it's on a Google sheet if I'm out and about, I can access it on my phone. If I'm in front of my computer, it's in my computer, right? Like I have the ability to access that anywhere from the cloud. That's, that's, that's where my digital self like gets super excited. Like I can always access that where if I leave this at home or, you know, whatever, then I don't necessarily have that. Um, so that's one of my, my big things that I've started to implement this week is really getting in a better um, habit of my tracking so I can do better with my follow-up. Um, I have, I found, I found my highlighter. I haven't, I haven't had a highlighter this time. I sometimes I like underline things with the pen, but just isn't as good. I found my highlighter. So I'm going to just mention some of the things that I highlighted, um, from chapter, I think it's 10 key of duplication, page 138. Um, the short list of what you need to be doing to start the duplication process. And I just, I thought it was fantastic. I love that it's kind of right there, short and simple, you know, good reminder for me and, you know, good, good thing to be putting in front of our newbies as they're getting started. Constantly adding to your list, reaching out and reaching back to people on your list, inviting people interested in the business to three-way calls or events. And if it's a right fit, adding them to your team adding those not interested in the business as customers and asking them for referrals, getting paid, and then ultimately also having fun. So that was good. And, and then on the next page, 139, this was just a, it was a good reminder for me. I'm gonna call myself out. I may have been a little lazy lately, um, but it talks about the half rule. The half rule says your peeps will do half of what you do, right? So if you're doing the bare minimum to earn a check, they're gonna do half of that which is pretty pathetic. So that's why to build a big team, to build big, you must commit today to be the top producer on your team. Then commit to besting yourself every month to show your team how it's done. So that's been a, a moment for me of like, okay, let me, let me really step back in and get into gear here. Um, I liked the idea on page 140, we can teach, we can coach, we can inspire, we can collaborate, we can laugh, we can have fun together, we can dream, we can plan, but we can't motivate that has to come from within each of us. And, uh, you know, that, that's super important. And I, you know, I did a training on this. There's a video out there that I did on this and I reminded myself recently too, that you have to, you know, we have to follow the fire. We can get lost in potential and like, I'm totally guilty of getting lost in potential, like in my business and relationships, like I can get lost in potential, 
and like lose sight of like where the actual activity is and like what the like now actions are and putting putting my attention on those people and those things that are actually in realization and action in this moment. So that was a good reminder for me. Um, Page 147 is great. The like what, let's get really clear on what you're supposed to be doing to grow a lucrative business. And um, I think this is important to, to really remember, right? And it's the first and foremost, it's about reaching out and talking to people. That 80% of the time needs to be there, training newbies, doing three-way calls, strategizing with runners, and recognizing and praising accomplishment. Um, you know, even, even in like doing this book circle, I love that we're doing this book circle and I love that we're practicing this, but also I think it's really important that we don't trick ourselves and be like, oh, I'm showing up, I'm doing, I'm reading the book and I'm on these Zoom calls that we're like building our business. Cause we're not building our business right now. We're doing some personal development work to support us with the skill set so we can go build our business. But this is not business building right now. This is not part of that 80%. And so, um, remembering that when and not putting all of this time on kind of the training and thinking that we're building our business because we're training it supports our business for sure but it you know we have to make sure that that 80 percent of our time is really in the like reaching out and having having those conversations um, on page 148 the 532 method Reaching out to five new people, following up with three people in your funnel, and quickly checking in with two business partners. I haven't maybe been exactly perfect on that 532, but I've been on that Saturday, yesterday, today, like just making sure I'm getting those reach outs. And, uh, and it feels great. It feels, it's, I mean, it's a shift for me. I haven't, I haven't been in so much of that action. Um, I shared on Saturday part of that is like the last month, month and a half. It's been a big inner journey for me. I've gone through a lot of my own personal shit and being in that. And, you know, that's one of the beauties of this business is that we have the ability to move in our own rhythms and our own seasons. Um, but I had to get real with myself. of like, okay, I've been in this for a while. I haven't been so on, on the ball with my business. Like, yeah, I still need to tend to myself and, and make sure that I'm taking care of myself in this process. But I need to make sure that I'm doing this. If I'm not getting these actions in, then... I'm going to be in trouble. I don't want to be in trouble. Nobody wants to be in trouble. Um, let's see. I think that's probably kind of my big takeaways. Um, I will, I think I'm so glad she put chapter 12 in though. Karma's a bitch if you are, because <laughs> this is a relationship game and we want to play ethical and we want to play nice. And, and I think that's really important. And, um, you know, I've both experienced, um, you know, people not playing so nice and probably have been a person who maybe said something in a room, um, like on page 167, follow, follow um, meeting and event etiquette, right? Like maybe have been a person that was kind of like, oh man, my person, my guest didn't show up or whatever. And like feeling kind of bummed and, you know, Nobody else may or may, you know, may or may not have heard me say that, but she's just pointing out that you never know when you're in that kind of setting who's there and who could hear you. And like, we need to really make sure that we're totally like in like the strongest place of really what's the culture that we're creating. And if somebody else's guest is hearing me, you know, complaining, then what kind of, you know, what kind of energetic does that set for them if they're kind of in the like tucking out what the what the scene is all about and that like how do we deal with people bumping into each other page 162 um right like if you've talked to somebody making seeing if they've talked to other people figuring it out you know good ethics is to push somebody back if they've already talked to somebody about it push somebody back to where they where they started right and then if they make a decision like they don't really want to work with that person well then it can be a little tricky and you have to navigate and figure that out um but um, like after I'm just going to read this, even if the person she's already talked to is in your upline, I implore you not to believe the horseshit rationaliza rationalization that it's okay to ignore the prior conversations because you're on her team and this benefits her as well. I'm here to tell you, sister, we do care and we are capable of figuring out if it makes sense to put a prospect of ours as a customer or business partner under you. Plus that's how you'd want to be treated by your team, right? And that hits home for me because that's happened multiple times to me. It'd be like, oh, you're on, you'd be on Kiana's team still. 
and and it sucks <laughs> like for me it sucks and if it happened to you it would suck too right so um i i just really love that she put that chapter in and named that because we want to we want to play nice we want to play fair we want to play ethical and ultimately grow a really strong uh culture so that's my share i'm i don't know i'm sure something's happened for joanne that she's not able to be here um but so with that i'll just open it up to who wants to share kind of their takeaways and um and any maybe implementation momentum that you're gaining from this yeah where you're at this week Hi. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of the same notes that you did, especially um, about the five, three, two method. Mm -hmm. And I've probably been doing like the one, two, three method or something. I don't know. I've had it upside down. So that was really great to read and get that kind of formula. Um, and I think that it's, what I need to commit to and I'm going to do that. So I'm excited about that. And you know, what you just said about like just showing up for a book circle, it's not really um, building your business. It's, you know, investing time in your self development. I totally agree with that. Um, but I just want to say, I'm so glad we're doing this because otherwise this would just be on um, the stack of books that I slowly get through and eventually do get through, but this is holding me accountable. So thank you. Um, and then I loved that she got me thinking about how am I organizing um, a system for the reach backs and how she said something um, about, you know, even scribbling down little details about people's reasons why they're saying, you know, the time isn't right right now because I'm doing this remodel and I'm stressed about that or whatever. Like to take a little note of that and say, hey, I understand, I'll, I'll reach back out in five or six weeks and we can talk, it'll be a better time. And then to, you know, ground into the conversation by that reference point of, hey, how did that remodel go? And it's just like, you have the justification to just get on the phone and do that. So that's where I struggle with often is like, what's my thing to break the ice? And lately it's just been like, hey, I wanna pick your brain about something um, or some kind of riff on that. But I'm really gonna take this to heart because I think we all appreciate that more personal, um, I guess, connection anyway. It's like, it's showing that you're a good listener, which is what this business is all about. So that's really great. And then, yeah, just figuring out a better system for all of this, because I am not super digital. Like I, I'm kind of half and half, but I love, um, keeping things scribbled in my calendar and notebook, which has been working up to this point. But as my business is growing, I realize I need to implement it on a sort I don't know, some sort of spreadsheet or something. So anyway, yeah. So Alyssa did put in the, in the chat um, right now a link. She's recommending TeamZ, which is, um, is a, like a digital CRM. I know Alyssa, she's using using that. I think um, Sarah McNaughton is using the possibility. I'm, I'm willing to check it out, but I'm also like, I have an engineering degree, so I learned how to do things with spreadsheets. And so that's just as easy for me. <laughs> I, I'm a, I, you know, not everybody understands or knows a spreadsheet, but I, I know spreadsheets, so that works out really well for me. Can I say um, something quick about the, that, that app? Teensy? Yeah. Um, what, is helpful about it is that it's super simple and you work like left to right so you put people it actually helps you do like three two one or what was it three five three two yeah. <laughs> sorry five three two it actually helps you go from your prospects to your current follow-ups and then your team so you work left to right and then you can tag people 
you can tag people and then you can rate them for either a follow-up a week, a day, three days. Um, if they're like a three star, then I think they, you, it pops up on your list for 30 days from whenever you reached out to them. It's just like super, it's like stuff that I can't put on paper or in a spreadsheet. I cannot awesome. do spreadsheets. So if people like that, that helps and might be worth checking out. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome, Joanne. Want to share? I, sure, I'll share. I just had a really good uh, meeting with Eloise, one of my affiliates, and a new prospect that went a little bit over. So, um, let's see. We did a we did a follow up to this on Friday on our team call, which was really good. Um, so I'm loving these four chapters. Um, and let's see what feels like the best thing to say. You know, I think, I think what I just want to say is that, um, you know, you were talking at our last meeting, Kiana, I guess it was on Saturday, just about like, holy shit, this life stuff is getting in the way of me building my business. And um, um, I've had to focus a lot on self care and um, uh, just honoring kind of where I am and what's happening. And um, uh, so I'll say that this last week has been super interesting for me. Like I flew to Dallas and I started not feeling good and I didn't feel good for like a week. And then I felt good for two days. And then yesterday I like was flat on my back at four in the afternoon and I couldn't move. And, um, so whether it's like, I don't know, mental and emotional stuff or physical stuff, um, it's like, and then I read this Facebook post of this girl that I really like. And she's like, remember, we're all processing for the collective, you know, and I just, I just want to, you know, that's probably not too out there woo woo for anybody on this call, but it's like, you know, I'm, I'm doing my own deep inner work as always. And I'm also working with about five coaching clients right now. Um, and doing some major work, inner child work and, um, and, uh, and I'm trusting that things are unfolding as they are. And a lot of times I'm, I'm chugging along at 25 miles an hour and my head says, dude, you've got to kick this up to 50 because there is some place you need to go and some place you need to be. And don't you know, so-and-so enrolled three people this week and blah, 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 blah right? Mm -hmm. um, and reality is, is I'm chugging along at 25 and I got to be where I'm at and stop playing some big number on myself about what needs to be different and just fucking be patient with myself and be kind and appreciate what I'm doing. So I spend a lot of time thinking I should be doing more and that whatever I'm doing, it's not good enough. And I don't know, you know, if you guys are that too, I mean, some of us need to push ourselves a little more and some of us need to push ourselves a little less. And I'm probably often on the lesser side. Um, so I guess I want to do my check-in, which is that um, I just did a presentation. I'm doing one tomorrow. Um, go into a Prime My Body presentation that Maria's hosting Wednesday and one that'll be in Hollywood on Thursday. I'm inviting people to them. Um, I am, uh, I'm reaching out to people on my team and I'm also following up with people every day. And I've had about five events recently from the, from Expo West to being in Dallas. And I, you know, I connected with probably 12 people in Dallas that I sent information to to uh, a networking event I went to last week and one I went to the week before. So I have about 50 people that I've connected with over the past couple of weeks just to follow up with. And, um, and I'm systematically moving my way through that process and, you know, taking time to just pray for guidance into who, who's, who's the next person that I have an opportunity to bless in whatever way and shape that form is. Um, and to let myself, you know, move faster when the, moving faster thing feels like it's happening and not run a big trip on myself when it doesn't. So, um, yeah, I think that's what feels good. And I'm carrying the book around with me and I'm opening it up and I'm reading through little pieces of it and digesting it. And, um, 
and I'm knowing that I have the words in the moment to connect with people. Um, uh, and I'm also, uh, I'm supporting a bunch of people on my team that are in it. You know what I mean? They're frustrated. They're not feeling well. They're challenged. Um, I want to say thanks to everybody who showed up Friday on the, on the team training call. Um, you know, I just appreciate the ways that people are showing up. I appreciate the efforts that everyone's doing. Um, I know this is simple, but not easy and, um, I'm not going anywhere. So, uh, it's, you know, it's, um, just good to breathe and relax and enjoy and appreciate. And I really love the new oil. I am very, very excited about the new oil and sharing it with people and the momentum and the enthusiasm. And I'm um, trying not to get too ahead of myself or carried away or run any big trips on myself and just relax and enjoy it all. So that's my share. Mm, thanks, Joanne. Yeah. Um, when you were sharing, one of the things that came to mind for me is that um, I just watched Matt Kahn's when I think it's his latest video on, um, forget exactly what it's called, but it's something about healing sadness or something mm -hmm. or other, but whatever the title is actually one of the things that he really talks about, like kind of the core message in there is this, like finding this balance place, this, this harmony between the striving and the acceptance and appreciation. Like the appreciation of what it like we don't want to not he, he you know he says like it's not to not strive at all it's not to not have you know some sometimes in the spiritual world it's like oh i'm just gonna sit and be and i'm not gonna try to make anything happen mm -hmm. but sometimes we need to give ourselves some of that space and some of that that, that mo those moments but it's about being in that place where we're both like in the acceptance of now in the appreciation of exactly how things are now with a balance of striving to to get to that next place so if you haven't watched that one that might be good medicine for you and uh and we're doing it right you know i, I love that five three two right it's not that unreasonable to reach out to five people follow up with three and check in with two people right that's not unreasonable and that you know that for in this you know that team that changed everything for them the yep. woman who kind of figured it out for herself she's, well, what, the quote was, I didn't realize I wasn't talking to enough people until I started talking to enough people. And then when that momentum started to happen, they started teaching other people that and like, you know, started to really go. And then that, and that's, a, that's a growth mode, right? That's a growth mode. Like I, I'm like, I'm the both and, right? That's the growth mode. And then there's the like, just consistency. Are you talking to somebody every day about the business? Are you talking to somebody every day about the products? You know, are you checking in with your team members every day? Like that's kind of a, a maintain type of or, or building some consistency and momentum but growth like we gotta be talking to people it's a bit it's, it's my it's my curve right now it's my curve right now too like okay i'm yeah owning it i'm not talking enough to, to enough people i'm not beating myself right. up but let me start talking to more people yep yeah. which for me is a lot just about following up with people that i've met over the last month two months three months a year and the other thing I want to say is if anybody was not on Aaron's call yesterday, please listen to the recording. You have got to hear Matthew Lehman and his affiliate Victor. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and same thing with the dad who shared on the call the, from last Tuesday, mm -hmm. who's got the kid on the spectrum. Um, the, the, both those testimonials, one a little bit more focused on the product and how it helped his teenager and the other one on, um, sharing this and building a team globally and the, how it's connecting communities. You know, I, I, I never really talked to Matthew Lehman. I've seen him at some events before, but like he's talking about cacao ceremonies and plant medicine ceremonies and connecting with like the woo woo community and like like my people, right? He's talking about my people um, and how, what a great fit this is for. And so I think that just to just ride the wave of some of these leaders and the doors that they're opening to get into the possibilities about what can happen so that you pick up the phone and call those people up and be like, hey, listen, I really want you to take a look at this. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. very inspired awesome. listening to him. So, yeah. Yeah, he's good. I like him.
All right, who else has got to share? Hey, Kiana, Hi. it's Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. So I want to share a couple of successes. Yay! Um, just kind of using the stuff from the book. So one was um, last week I mentioned I had somebody who just like was not getting back to me. And so like as soon as we got off, I sent him a text and I was like, all right, you know, let me know. I was really clear and I was like, you know, I need some clarity moving forward. If you're just not into this or this isn't the right time for you, let me know, um, you know, and just give him a few other tidbits. And he got back to me the next morning. So, you know, we're still kind of going back and forth, but I think for him it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I got to respond to this. So, you know, just like gaining that courage to be really direct, I think was really helpful. And um, the other one was uh, I went to a networking thing here um, in Tucson yesterday and one of the people that was there and like specifically why I went was this person that I'd been friends with on Facebook, but hadn't really approached about the business because I didn't know her that well. So I went and we chatted and she's interested, but she's also checking out some other oils. And when I got home, I sent her some information and she responded. And one of the things that she said was she really appreciated my unaggressive attitude toward it. And you know what, this book is like totally to thank for that, of just kind of like giving me the template for how to talk to people and how to approach people. And you know, that really spoke a lot to me of like the success in being able to do this more comfortably. So, yay. Awesome. yay, that's so good, right? I, I love that line of like, you know, I don't know if this is really a fit for you or exactly. not. Yeah. But I love it. If you, I, I've been saying this to people, actually. I've been, I've been, I've had quite a few phone calls. So like Saturday after this, I got on the phone, and yesterday, you know, I really was building for tonight. We have a meeting with Austin, and I'm just telling people, I'm like, hey, look, I don't, I don't know if this is a fit for you or not, but I'd love it. You know, if you'd be willing to check it out and understand what it is, so we can find out if it is, and if it's not, then you probably know some people that I could help, and I really would love referrals at this point in my business. Exactly. People are like, oh, yeah, okay, send me the video, or yeah, I'll come, yeah. or whatever. And it's like, yeah, great. Yeah. So good. And it feels so much better in talking yeah. to people. Yeah. So. It, you know, I mean, and I guess there could be situations, and when you know people kind of well, be like, be like, I think this could be really good for you. Mm -hmm. But in general, they just have this, like, I don't know if this is for you or not. Yeah. But, if you're willing to take a look, if it's not for you, you might know somebody who it is. And, I, and that's kind of been my, I think my growth edge too, of just saying, like, I'm really looking for referrals in my business right now. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not you, you probably know somebody and people respond to that, right? And, and even talking to other uh, like professionals, like I've got a mortgage lender who, who actually called me because I've been looking at it, the possibility of buying my house. He was referred to me by somebody. He called me and mentioned the fact that he had like heard about what I was doing and checked it out. And he's coming to the meeting tonight. Right. Oh, awesome. And then like the woman who's the real estate agent for this house, you know, we've kind of had old conversations around it. I'm like, Hey, let's get together so we can look at this. If it's not for you, I'd love referrals. Right. And that's real estate agents. You know, these all people all work on referral systems. So they're like, Oh yeah. Okay. Right. And like, I'll look at this so I can see what I can do. So that is big growth for me. I don't think I really ever asked for referrals for these last two years. I don't think I've really asked yeah. anybody for referrals. Now yeah. it's all about who do you know? Who do you know that yep. I might be able to help? Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yay. Thanks, Rebecca. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Who else? Um, I know you mentioned this, but hi. Um, I was really struck by that that our affiliates will do half of what we do. That's really that's interesting. I I would have never thought that because it seems to me like everyone's just doing their thing and we're paying attention to each other's doing. But the best thing I can do is be um, rocking it and be an amazing role model 
And actually, on our team, we have a hemp hive where people post when people sign up. And there are certain people that are always signing up people. And that they're not really the people I'm hearing coaching or making a big deal about anything. That they're, they're the ones signing people up. And, um, and you can just feel energy from that. Like more than anyone just sitting you down and saying, hey, you need to be doing this, this, and this. Um, so there's a lot of power to... Um, our own power. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And it's, I mean, I can, you know, from experience, two years plus of experience, in general, most people will not do what you do, right? Like you have to be that, that commitment. It's, it's, uh, it turns out that, that we're, uh, those of us that even have the vision, the dream, the desire to go after something big, to have a six figure income, to have a seven figure income, it's a very small percentage of people who even think that way, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, we have to model that. And it's not even necessarily about making people start to think the way we think, but just showing them what's possible so that they go, oh, okay, well, maybe I could have a little bit more. Maybe I could have a little bit more. Maybe I could have a little bit more, um, you know, and, and setting the pace. JT talks about it all the time. You're the leader. You set the pace. Fast, faster, fastest. Yeah. Awesome. Who else has a share? I'll share. Hello, Hi. everybody. Hi. Uh, so karma's a bitch if you are. Yeah. Um, you know, I learned that the hard way about a year ago when I let myself get frustrated with an affiliate because we were kind of going in circles over the same stuff and my impatience took over. And um, what I learned from that was it takes a long time to undo that and gain trust back. You know, even though I could, in my mind, justify my frustration, it took a long time and um, big lesson. And I was glad for that chapter to remind me of that. I don't consider myself a bitch by nature. You know, I'm usually very encouraging and, you know, supportive, but that one lesson was a big one for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wanted to share, I've been so inspired by you, Kiana and Joanne having this study group that I wanted to offer it to my team because this book is so important. So I'm starting a new study group with chapters one through four this Saturday. And anybody's welcome, any team. If you got people who are just starting the book, send them my way. It's not that you guys haven't done a fabulous job because you have, it's just I want to continue the learning. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I've posted about it on the Freedom Community page so people can find the details there. Awesome. Love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's so important. I think that's one of the best things we can do is keep training people. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Scott Freeman just sent a picture last night. He just got, he just got his copy of the book. I was like, yay. It's so oh, good. good. I'd love to get a male perspective because it's. Yeah, so yeah maybe you. ping him. See if he'll pop in with you. Uh, and Joanne, Joanne gets credit for that. He, he said she really sold him on it. So. Oh, yeah. I'll message him. I'll cool. send him a thing. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Maddie, Alyssa, or Susan, you want to share about the book? How your takeaways or impact or how you're implementing? I'll say something briefly. Great. <laughs> Break the silence. Um, but I do have to, to hop off this now. But um, the, the, the chapter, Karma's a Bitch If You Are, the one thing that I appreciated her <laughs> mentioning is the, the golden rule for events. Like, don't talk smack. Like, just don't. It's toxic. It will mess everything up. And... Um, I just, uh, I just like that reminder. <laughs> I wanted to bring it up to everyone. Like, you don't want to, you don't want to talk bad about anything or any issues in your organization or, and have someone new hear it. And it just puts a bad seed in their brain. So 
don't do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Even if you think you're over in the corner with your like trusted affiliate friend. Yep. Right? Like, it's just, yep. it's just not the vibe we want to put into this space. Like I said, like I'm, I'm certain that I've at least at some point been like, oh, my people didn't show up or like whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. But no, don't do that. I don't need to do that. Like we don't need to do that. Yeah. And, um, and also with events, I don't think it was in this chapter, but it's helpful to let people hold their questions for the end because you might have a bad apple that's super new or is a, um, what's it called? Evaluating it. And if they keep interrupting with questions, even though you want to answer it right then and there, it's, it's also toxic. So that's a good etiquette that I don't think that's in here. Yeah. She may or may not have addressed that. We don't, yeah. I don't ever hold, uh, I yeah. don't, I've been in the room when it's been invited. I don't ever hold open question. We close the meeting. We say, get with the person that invited you. Come talk to us if you have questions because yeah. it can ruin the whole energetics of what you just said. <laughs> totally. With that one person who is like out for the kill. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. So that's my little, uh, tidbit. <laughs> awesome. I gotta go though. All right, honey, thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. All right, coming to the close. Maddie or Susan? Glad you're here, by the way, Susan. You popped in a little late. I didn't say hi. I'll say something. Okay. Um, it's pretty brief. And I'm, I have to admit, I actually... Um, listen to the whole book because I thought today was the other chapters but that's okay it's good it's a good review um again like what I said on Tuesday is pretty much about just the duplication process this week I don't know what's going on with me I feel like extremely stuck in fear like I feel like my fucking feet are in cement and I don't and I feel like I don't have a voice and it's weird because this doesn't always happen, but it ha happens like, and I guess maybe it's because that's what I need to do is act, you know, and that's usually when you feel most fearful is like by acting, but I don't know. I just like get so fucking nervous and I already, but, and it's like most people get nervous because they don't know the information, but like, I love the information. I, I know I'm obsessive, but I've talked about this before, but Right now, I just feel depleted, and I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I maybe just, like, sit with it, and maybe I'm just having a bad day or mm -hmm. something. I don't know, but I know it's kind of off topic and not really about the book, but I want to be a success, and I just, these feelings sometimes, like, are, yeah, to just bring me down, and it's really hard to get back up and want to take the action, but I know I do want to take the action, so now I'm just being confusing, but... <laughs> Pretty much that's where I'm at right now. That's so I'm okay. hoping it's a bad day. So Yeah, it's okay. And I think the most important part in that is one, just first of all, being the awareness of that, having the awareness, right? Like you 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 are not stuck, but you are the awareness that's aware that you're feeling stuck. Okay? Does that make sense? And just being yeah. in a like observer mode with that. And then the other thing I would really encourage you is like just thinking about movement. How can you create movement? It doesn't even have to mean that you're picking up the phone to call someone for your business, but can you go for a walk? Can you go for a run? Can you turn on some music and dance, right? Can you go out and play with the dog, right? What, what is it that you can do in your being, your physical body and your experience to be in motion, right? And start to shift the energy and shift your, your state of being and then be able to spiral that into like, okay, now let me pick up the phone and call somebody, right? I think there's a place for sitting with it and being an observation and feeling what's happening. But when we're stuck, you know, we, the idea is to get into motion. And so it doesn't have to, you know, if you're feeling stuck around making phone calls, just get into motion somewhere else and then let that carry over. And it's okay. okay. It's totally okay. You're where you're at and there doesn't have to be anything wrong with what's happening right now. You know, what is, is. And also like moving towards what it is that you desire. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you enjoying so much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Turn on some music, girl. Get crazy. Hey. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. All right, so Susan's with the grandbaby. She says she can't talk. She's in listen mode only. So that is a wrap then, unless anybody else has anything burning that you want to share, anything else that's come up. Otherwise, we can call this circle complete. All right, awesome. So we have Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We'll cover the last four chapters. And then we'll also do that again on Tuesday. Uh, so whichever time works for you, one or the other, or both if you're inspired. Uh, Tuesday, same time, 1 o'clock Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain. And then if you've got people that are coming on board that are just starting to plug in and want to plug them in with the group that Laura's doing, that starts on Saturday um, as well. And the information for that is in the Freedom Community Facebook page. So, Joanne, you have anything you want to wrap with? I just love what you just talked about. Uh, two things I just want to highlight because it's like, it's what I've been covering with a bunch of clients I'm working with right now, which is like, you know, whatever thought, we're having whatever feelings whatever sensations whatever experiences like remember you're the awareness that's aware of those things um and awareness is kind of like the movie screen it's not impacted by the content of the film you know so there's something kind of pure and expansive about just being able to notice what's arising without getting completely entangled in it um, and the other thing is that whatever you can do to move energy, it's really good. So what I've been doing a lot on my coaching calls and with clients I work with is, you know, take, take five deep breaths and make noise on your exhales. So like we've been, ah, I mean, it feels so effing good to do this. You guys, maybe we want to close our call out this way. Do you guys want to do this? Sure. I was actually yes. just shaking too the other thing is you want to shake like animals shake right right so it could be shaking or moving or exhaling so let's take five deep breaths together and make some noise ready <laughs> you guys gotta unmute yourself so we can hear you <laughs> <laughs> about making noise on your exhales that's really good so um yeah love you guys thanks for playing yeah love you guys too have a great week we'll see you next time thank you bye, bye everybody you. bye, bye.